Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. No, I'm not upside down. I'm just here in New Zealand to check out Rocket Lab's gorgeous new rocket factory. Honestly, I'm going to hesitate to call it a rocket factory. This place looks a lot more like a modern art museum. And I even wore my best clothes imaginable with little space shuttles on my shirt to a rocket factory who wears almost exclusively t-shirts. I felt very out of place. Nevertheless, let's get in there. I'll show you around. It's amazing. So I'm here inside Rocket Lab's brand new mission control and it is absolutely incredible. And this is just a tiny portion of the entire factory, which is 7,500 square meters. This thing is huge and it's like the most futuristic thing I've ever seen in my life. So this is their actual mission control. And obviously not only does it look amazing, it performs a lot of functions. So this is the same place they're going to control rockets when they are launching from LC-1 out on the Mahia Peninsula here in New Zealand, but also when they start launching from Wallops for LC-2, that's also going to be where they control the rockets. So this is totally wired up. Everything is controlled via the internet, basically, and they can fly the rockets from right here in Auckland, which is really cool. Another fun fact is they just use off-the-shelf components. These aren't fancy, crazy headsets or anything. These are just normal gaming headsets that aren't crazy expensive. That way, if one happens to break, they just swap it out, no big deal. They aren't down several hundred dollars. They just go, eh, here you go. It's stuff like this that I think really makes a difference. As you may know, one of the most amazing features of Rocket Lab's Electron rocket is their carbon fiber fuselage slash tank. This makes the vehicle extremely lightweight, strong, and quite frankly, sexy. Although the 3D printed engines and avionics are manufactured in Huntington Beach, California, the main fuselage and final assembly of the Electron is done right here in Auckland. So speaking of how insanely light carbon fiber is, here is the entire first stage of an Electron rocket, and watch this. Literally moving it with my bare hands. I could push this thing, I could do a marathon pushing this thing. This is so crazy light, and also, look at these crazy wheels, what kind of, what kind of wizardry is this? What do you guys do down here in New Zealand that, what? This is crazy, this is nuts. I learned all about how Rocket Lab managed to be the first rocket company to make a liquid-fueled orbital rocket out of carbon fiber directly from the man himself, Peter Beck, the founder and CEO of Rocket Lab. So the, the, big, the, the next big question is obviously, you know, carbon fiber and, yep. and cryogenics, how on earth did you tackle that? Yeah, that's a big problem. That's a big problem. Yeah. And it's not, it's not just the cryogenics because you, you have, you know, we have our tanks, then the, you know, the lineless tanks, um, and you have the liquid oxygen, so you have the compatibility of the liquid oxygen with the composite, which was a huge amount of research. Mm -hmm. Then all of the, the cryogenic element that you point out, which is also another, you know, chunk of research. But you also have exterior thermal heating as well. So you have, you know, two, two or three hundred degrees exterior temperature heating. Right. Right. You've got negative 180 degrees this is all centigrade, yeah, sorry yeah. by the way, <laughs> negative 183 internal you know, uh, cooling mm -hmm. and these great temperature gradients and then you go and smash it through the atmosphere and give it big wax as you pass through shear layers and all those kinds of things and you, know, you can go down to that tank and literally push on it, you know, it's that thin. So um, it's, yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a big engineering challenge. To, is that, to get was that one of the things you almost started with? And you're yeah. designing the electron? Also? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the reason for the carbon composite um, is, is it enables us to, to build tanks at an unprecedented performance, mass wise, mm -hmm. and, and um, manufacturing wise, it, it's, it's unprecedented as well. So, you know, we start off with a tube, we bond in bulkheads, and we have a tank. If you think about how you'd make that tank out of aluminum, you start off with flat sheets of aluminum, you roll them, you friction stir weld them, then you've got to paint them and pascovate them, and then stress relieve them, and all those kinds of things. It's, it's a big process. Whereas, you know, you can see out in the factory, we just start off with these, you know, solid lengths of tube and just start, start building tanks. It's, it seems backwards, because it seems, you know, carbon fiber is such an exotic material. You yes, know? it is. And you think of it as like, that'd be so hard to manufacture, but then as long as you have a machine that can... The processes, yeah. Produce yep. it, yep. that's half the challenge. And so, 
I put together a little, a little interesting kind of maybe coincidence about you know New Zealand yep. and carbon fiber and the history of New Zealand. Yep. You guys are really big into sailboat racing. Yep. And exactly. with really high-end carbon fiber hulls and carbon exactly. fiber sails and masts and all that stuff. Yep. So have you actually poached from the sailing industry then? To well, absolutely. And in, in you know before I started Rocket Lab, I was working in a government lab on advanced um, composite materials and structures. So you know um, we, we we all came into this to this loving the black. You know the, the yeah. black's good. Um, so yeah, New Zealand does have a, a very rich history and, and a strong uh, kind of you know capability in, in composites for sure. So yeah, no, we um, we, we certainly um, I think we employ one third of all of the composite industry within uh, New Zealand. Really? Yeah. At the launch of this video, the entire 80 minute long interview is available exclusively to Patreon supporters and will eventually be available to the public in the future. So if you just can't wait, hop on over to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut to gain access now. Rocket Lab is currently growing like a weed. They've more than doubled their workforce this year already and are preparing to become a well-oiled launching machine. Their plan is to be launching the Electron weekly. I wonder what that'll do for New Zealand's already impressive tourism industry. Imagine seeing a rocket launch in New Zealand. Sign me up. Don't let the Electron's small size fool you. This is a workhorse. Rocket Lab's goal is frequency and reliability. They've done a ton of research and found out that the vast majority of payloads and the quickest growing market is the small sat industry, while the big geostationary satellite market is declining. By offering an inexpensive first class ride to space, they're planning to secure the small sat market. No more ride sharing with bigger payloads and being put into a less than ideal orbit. They can put you where you want, when you want. And in this day and age of rapidly evolving and ever competitive technology, this is important. I've already done a video doing a really deep rundown on the awesome Electron rocket, which there is a link in the description. But seeing this thing in person, I'm so much more excited about Rocket Lab and their Electron rocket than I thought I ever would be. Thank you so much Rocket Lab for inviting me out to see your gorgeous new factory, and thank you Peter Beck for your time and hospitality. It was a real pleasure chatting with you. I owe a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me be able to do trips like this across the world and allow me to share my amazing experiences. If you want to help me continue producing content like this, head on over to patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. And while you're on the internet, check out my web store for some awesome space merch. everydayastronaut.com slash shop. Thanks everybody, that does it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people.